Alexander, in the first story, The Year of Nostalgia, it's about a pair of adult daughters who buy their father a holographic version of the mother who had just recently passed away. And it becomes a little bit of a comedy of errors. Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially because the family ends up liking or finding the, the new holographic mother much more intriguing than their real mom. And that's part of what I wanted to explore was like how we get connected and addicted to uh, the replacements of our family, such as Snapchat or Facebook. It's sort of a, a metaphor for all of that. Because we ourselves are not that interesting if, if, if you take it in the lens of these programs and apps. Yeah. Because they offer heightened versions of ourselves. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, when you're saying that, it makes me think of how on dating apps now, people will put filters on that make themselves look younger or these kind of filters that can take away wrinkles. And so I think even in our daily interactions in some ways, we're trying to find this idealized version of ourself. And it met, and several other stories made me think of how oftentimes we'll refer to the persona that we have inside ourselves that we think of ourselves as the true version of ourselves and not the many other facets that exist. Yeah, I think that's true. Uh, I mean, I don't know what your experience is, but there's this feeling of that we're never really fully expressing who we are. Now, we're doing an okay job, but if you look at our different places, like how we portray ourselves at work or how we portray ourselves to uh, friends that we kind of know, but we don't share everything with, right? There's This is something I explored in the first book with openness of how much of that inner self do we really feel comfortable sharing with one another? And I think that modulates depending on the person. And sometimes you're sharing 80% or 70% and sometimes 20%. Um, and so a technology that could potentially allow us to see the full truth of each other is both horrifying and, and <laughs> wonderful. Well, and because a lot of us do lie to ourselves as a mm. matter of course. And is our true self even a true self if we're constructing on our own delusions? Yeah, completely, right? Like you think like, yeah, I'm a really upbeat person. And then you ask around and no, you're kind of a downer to hang out with. Or like, yeah, you know, I'm really giving or we tell ourselves these things. Or the opposite, right? That you say, yeah, I'm no good. Or, you know, I've never been fill in the blank. And that's actually a limitation of who we are. Uh, and so I think you're right. I think we do lie to ourselves about this inner self that we construct. Um, in the tour guide stories that we were talking about, I have this island that you go to where you are your best self ever. And you start writing the novel you've always wanted to write and you play music and you do yoga. And then you come back and you never return to the island. And you slowly slip away from all these great habits once you return, but you remember that self and always imagine you'll go back to that self and you can kind of see the self waving at you. And I think that's, this is a recurring theme I'm realizing that shows up in a lot of my work of, of, of how do we connect with that self and how do we feel distance from it. 